We are here with uh, Larry Lessig uh, at ETEC in San Diego and uh, Larry just gave his keynote which was fantastic about uh, uh, the political corruption and what he wants to do about it uh, and he very graciously agreed to speak with us even if uh, he's exhausted. Thank you very much Larry. Two very simple questions. The first question is regarding the forthcoming uh, um, end of the uh, primaries in the US and uh, the forthcoming elections in November. Uh, you endorsed uh, Barack Obama, so have I. Even if I cannot vote, I would if I could. Uh, why do you think he's a great candidate and why do you think he would be a great president? Well, there are many dimensions. It's going to overdetermine for me because I actually was a colleague of his in Chicago, so I know him not as a politician but as a person first. Um, but in the area of technology, I think the reason is that, in my view, he has given us the most subtle and, and uh, intelligent suite of uh, policy choices in the context of technology. So network neutrality position he's taken is not an extreme version or not a version that caves into the telecom companies, but um, actually creates a kind of neutrality which would be enforceable and valuable. Um, with government data, he's, he's, he's elaborated a position that would require government data to be um, accessible, downloadable, machine-readable form in a way that can be used by people not in the government. Um, and has a vision of a chief technology officer who would be balancing technology and policy for the federal government as a whole. These are all, you know, not, not signals into the soul of Obama himself, but into the team that I think he's collected, and uh, I think they're good signals. So uh, uh, that's at least part of the reason why I would be strongly supporting him. Thank you. And we are going to have an election in Italy uh, in about a month's time. Uh, our governments are uh, less stable uh, than those uh, uh, in the US and even if the electoral turnout in Italian elections is, is rather high, at least compared to American standards, uh, political activism has been waning a little uh, uh, in the last 20 years, I would say. Um, you have been uh, a great advocate of uh, using technological tools to increase the involvement of uh, uh, younger generations uh, into uh, political activity. Uh, what could you recommend uh, that uh, we could potentially implement to make it so that as well as in the US, in Italy or elsewhere in Europe, technology is used for uh, this kind of goals? Well, I think the key insight is to recognize the the importance of architecting participation so that people can be doing it while they're doing other things. Um, so if your model of political participation is coming to a meeting and staying in a, in a smoky room from 6 o'clock till 9 o'clock at night, there's a very small section of the population who will be able to do that. But if you begin to think about making politics the sort of thing you can do between doing your email and chatting with your friends and watching television and doing your work, then more people will be doing it. So if you begin to create bite-sized chunks of activism that are spread on the net uh, and are fun to play with or fun to do, the way Wikipedia makes bite-sized chunks of you know, editing projects that people have an interest in doing, in doing um, then I think you can, you can involve a much wider range of the public. And the key is to recognize the next generation is, uh, is the multitask tasking generation. And so you have to build the product that you want them to engage in the way that seamlessly connects to everything else. Um, and I think that's going to be the big key to uh, political participation of the Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.